Good morning, everybody. Oh, great timing. Good morning, everybody. My name is Rita Levin. I am the proud mayor of this fantastic village of Asai. I used to say, until five minutes ago, that I'm proud to be the mayor of one of the most beautiful villages sitting in about 3.2 square miles with about 27,000 people that is on the side of the beautiful Hudson River, which is why the environment is a key component to everything we should have always been doing, but we will for sure be doing since uh, I became mayor two years ago and mayors before me um, have made tremendous efforts, but we are now moving at rapid speed. But today, I'm going to introduce myself differently. Today, I'm the mayor of all those things, but also the newest innovation hub in Westchester County. So, you knew that you were coming here a few days before Thanksgiving, so there's going to be a lot of thank you appropriately to do. I'm going to get right to the point. First of all, you should know that you're being recorded because some people do this and they're not experts in speaking because we're going to have our elected officials but some other members and so you should just not be nervous but know that everything is being recorded. So just want to do some housekeeping. Secondly, uh, I, I want to welcome all the elected officials but I'm super excited to have some partners here in the room. So let me tell you what the real announcement is. A couple of days ago, after a year and a half of work by our amazing village staff, we have the opportunity to become a major innovation hub because NYSERDA, the state of New York, has awarded us $7 million in a grant for e-bikes to be put out in this village. And when we are successful, not in it, but when we're successful, which will be really, really quick to that success, they will add more money to our neighboring communities who are here with us today for them to replicate the success and bring that innovation to their communities. And when they're done, the state of New York should, I hope, if it's the right government in place and it is, as it is now and since the election, uh, will, through our folks in the state, in the county, and all of the local governments, will take that success and take it to the rest of the Hudson Valley and the rest of New York State. And with that, 4.2 billion, if I have that number right, bond that was passed by 69% of the folks that voted, that should happen for everyone in New York State. We're just the first. So let me tell you about the innovation and what's happening. We brought the bikes so you could all get the idea that this is about e-bikes. It's really about mobility. Let me, so I don't forget, and I oftentimes do this as my husband, Judge Mark Reisman, tells me all the time, make sure you thank the folks first that made this happen. Maddie, where's the red dress I saw before? There you are. Maddie Sahaj. <laughs> so the cross for you is more than for me as it should be, and I'm happy about that. Let me tell you how important the staff of this village is under Karen Vintour. The importance of the staff is that when staff and mayors and elected officials work hand in glove, when they're both on the same path, and they both have tremendous respect for each other, amazing things happen. Amazing things happen, like today I can tell you that this village, as of the past two years, now has $20 million in grants from various levels of government, from county to state to federal. That enables a village like ours, a small village, to actually do some amazing stuff, change community centers, bring in waterfront infrastructure, housing, and lots of other programs through the DRI, and now through this innovative initiative that doesn't bear the burden on its members of its communities, many of whom uh, really support everything we do through taxation. Asadi, like many small villages, does not have a big corporate enterprise, doesn't have universities, and all the other things that some villages, towns, and absolute cities have. So we count on our small businesses and we count on our residents. This allows us not to put all the burden on them. It allows us to have real money to put real infrastructure change that looks at equity, looks at environmental justice and social justice, creates jobs, 
by getting help from other parts of government. So the partners involved are brought this, and Maddie's role in this was while looking with our consultants, uh, Nygaard, Nelson Nygaard, about our parking problem that we've had for years. While in that conversation, we're proving how open-minded we are as a village, and how open-minded both the staff and uh, the legislative body is, had conversations that asked these consultants what else we could get from them. And they came across the grant from NYSERDA that was available to them. They put a team together. The team is Nelson Nygaard from Planning, who does a lot of work here in Westchester. EIT Energy, Indo Energy, a European came up with that name, so I can never actually say this correctly. And um, Acton, the bikes, which we're all going to be using. There's going to be about a thousand bikes distributed here in the village. And of course, the partner is the village of Osmo. The incubator communities, which will take this successful uh, innovative idea, are, I think, all represented here. They can raise their hand, and some of them will come up and speak. Um, we have our friends, obviously, in the town of Austin, with Supervisor Dana Livenberg. We have Dom Sperry represented here today. Thank you. I can't see with my glasses far, so I'm now pointing to the wrong place. Um, Tarry Town, the mayor, who I got to meet, and her folks are all here, and Croton, where is Brian? There he is. So those communities are part of this from day one. Then, of course, we have our community stakeholders. In this village, we always include community neighbors engagement. This time, they are part of the grant. I don't mean just in theory. I mean they will get part of the money in addition to the village out of the $7 million to not only have the input that they've had, but also get the word out to all of their members, to their media, to their boards, to their membership, to get all of that out uh, to their folks, and then include their folks when it comes for jobs, for training, and all the other pieces of this initiative. This initiative is not about bikes. This initiative is about e-mobility that adds the ability for a grandchild to visit his or her grandmother at Phelps. It allows a grandparent to, t to go and visit a child at an after-school program. It allows parents to go on long bike paths, which have been created in Westchester County, even if they're not in the best of physical shape, and that enables them to be with their family on a 20-mile uh, bike ride. It enables folks to do shopping without owning a car. It enables them to go to their job without owning a car, and all of the expenses of the car. And lastly, it is the best use of mobile environments today to create zero emission. I have to tell you that the reason I became environmentally involved is because I read a simple, straightforward article that upset me so much that I went home and said to my husband, who is an environmentalist, did you know about this? And he said, well, of course I knew about it. Where have you been? To learn that in the Bronx, the level of asthma is the greatest of any community in the United States and possibly in the world is so highly disturbing because who amongst us doesn't know people who grew up or lived in the Bronx or who grow up and are living in the Bronx today? It is still a problem today. It hasn't gone away. It's so humanly upsetting that in the city of New York, we have communities that because of the way roads and trucks and parks were developed and waste management was developed, I'm sure with good intentions, and because it is so highly populated with people, that in an industry that the rate of asthma is the highest in the United States. That cannot keep going on. And frankly, as we develop here in Westchester, we're going to come up with the same problem if we don't really look at the environment as a solution to human existence and human health. Not just for us and how we get older, but for the next generation coming up. I've already mentioned that my favorite part of this is that it also includes the community and job creation. Green economy, I think, as California has already learned, and so has Colorado, is the future. So the investment in a green economy, not just in the big cities, which is good, no complaints, but in villages like ours, where people can stay near their families by learning about the new industry at all ages, I think is part of the future. So, I didn't mention our partners yet, but I will. 
We have Neighbors Link. I think most of you know what these folks do. Where's Louisa? Where's Roland? You know, I met your boss today. I keep saying you're the CEO. And I'm like, you know, I almost introduced you that way. But she is our CEO here at Oscillate in the sense that she's been amazingly helpful in giving input to the consultants about who the people in this community are, or, or a segment of our community. Hudson Link is in the house. You're going to hear from that. Thank you. Rifka's in the house. There she is. I spoke to the woman last night, Jackie. Thank you. Also an ex-politician. Um, and Ifka. Uh, I'm sorry, I said Ifka. I'm literally somebody. Hudson Link, Neighbors Link, Ifka. Who am I leaving out? Open door. I'm sorry. I spoke to their board yesterday too. Uh, with lots of questions. So we're going to hear from some folks tonight. I saw um, George Latimer coming in. The success of all of this depends on government working with government, working with government to find these uh, opportunities and then to give villages like ours opportunities. I'm a big fan of Governor Hochul because. Uh, she has done a lot for small communities as far as funding and helping uh, through the DRI, but also uh, in so many different ways. Dana White is one of the trustees. She is a uh, stalwart uh, colleague in that she insists that we keep the history of our village while we innovate for the future, and that is a very big part. Um, some of the art trustees for various reasons weren't able to come, but we are here to represent the whole board because I am running a, a wonderful team of people that know when to take the spotlight and when to give the floodlight to others, and that is really important for politicians to do, especially local politicians. So today's the floodlight, not the spotlight. Um, and we have town representatives, Liz Feldman, and Dana is supervisor, and soon she will be helping us through the state, as she has. I will get it in writing, and we'll do it. And the rest will all be uh, introduced as they come up. And we do thank Green Ossity, uh, for Susan Ross, who uh, got me to buy a lecture years ago in one of the fairs that she runs, and is a big proponent here in village and town. And our EAC. Uh, chair, Kate Schott, who has been instrumental also in getting a lot of our environmental issues uh, to come across. I'm going to start with my glasses on. I don't want to take all the time to introduce all the local electives, which I'll do. If I miss anybody, I'll do it later. But I'd like to start with uh, New York State Senator Pete Barco, if I may, at the state level.
County is a non-attainment zone for the federal clean air. So we have our own problems right here in Westchester in terms of our air quality. And so this, this program gives communities and individuals the means. A lot of the things that we do are aspirational. You know, we have incentives to buy and make vehicles, incentives uh, to do home energy audit, incentives for solar panels. We build pipelines as an incentive hoping people will use them. This gives people the means on a daily basis to do the things that we talk about doing. And that's another reason why this program is so exciting.
also transformative. And we know how important it is to really start to change the way that we think about mobility and make sure that we think about micro-mobility as a really important part of, of the mix. And these electric bicycles are going to make that possible, to shift the way that people think and actually be an incubator, as Mayor Levin spoke about, for other communities. So this is going to be like a pilot. It's something that I personally have been working on for a long time. I want to tell you a couple little stories. We started with um, trying to get the Mill Go uh, bike lane established, um, and also the bumble path surrounding it between the town of Boston, the village of Boston, and the town of Newcastle. That has not died yet. It's just that we can't convince anybody that we actually need the money to fix up Route 133, which is a state road for most of, the, for most of it. The county has been very generous and has actually contributed $250,000 to the project, and we have the village and the towns on board, so we need to just get a little bit of grant money. I think that this is going to be a driver um, that's actually going to, to show the state why it should be putting its money into that versus maybe $3 million for sidewalks in our neighboring village, but not yet. Um, but I think, <laughs> we think that these projects are really important because it helps people. And here's another example. Um, we recently uh, formed uh, an organization, Asni, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Open Arms for Refugees. It started as Asni for Refugees to help resettle refugees. And one of the uh, young women who came here, she was actually the first refugee that we resettled, um, has now moved to Mount Kisco. She's actually working in the county, working um, in uh, Wright Plains in the port system. So she has a job, but she doesn't know how to drive. And we, she didn't know how to ride a bike either, but now she does. She knows how to ride a bike, and we were able to get her an electric bicycle to help her with her commute. And this is something that really is transformative for people who may not be able to get driver's licenses, may not be able to afford a car, and certainly to reduce the number of taxi rides, right? So we know that this is something that's really good for us. Um, and we also know that um, besides th that it can help people with first mile, last mile, we can get rid, just think about all the parking that we can free up, which is why this came up as part of the discussion about parking, right? If people for that first mile, last mile get into the train or getting to the B-line bus, if they're taking an electric bike and looking for a place to park, that certainly takes up a lot less, lot less room uh, than, than a car, and you know, a lot, obviously a lot less of an impact on the environment. So it's really, really incredible what we can do. And of course, we have so much, so many recreational assets and open spaces that these uh, can also help people, uh, you know, utilize here. And so whether it's for for transit, whether it's for uh, commuting, whether it's to get get. Um, to the best place on earth, which is the Hudson River, and to go up and down the Hudson River, which all of these communities, we all share that in common. Um, there's so many possibilities for this for this uh, program, and we know that infrastructure is going to also be a part of how that money gets spent. Um, and so, again, uh, as much as I'm excited for uh, all of the things that we've been working on locally in Austin, I'm also very excited for the region and, and stepping into my new role as assembly member. Um, I couldn't be more excited to make sure that the money continues to trickle down to our communities to make sure that these transformative projects can happen so that we can be less reliant on our fossil fuels and less reliant on our fossil fuel cars and our fossil fuel homes and the gas stations and just think about all the, all the open space that we can free up or room for housing that we can free up if we don't need as much room in this world for parking. I can't wait to take that next step, and I know that the way that's easiest to do that is when we have so many incredible partners from Green Austin, Open Door, and Neighbors Link, and HIPCA, and the county, and, and all of our partners at the local level. It just, it's not going to be that hard with all of you guys behind me and behind all of the state efforts that Pete and I are going to be working on together. So thank you so much. Um, congratulations, Austin. Congratulations, all of these communities. Um, for your support and getting us here today, and it's just incredible, so thank you. And I'm going to talk about instructions and introduce, next up, the village of Tarrytown Mayor and my friend, Karen Brown.
members here, because everybody, from the lawyer who looks at the hundreds of contracts, to Dale who does all the financials and makes sure that everything's done correctly. Uh, there are so many people involved, and they're all going to be involved. The town legislators, the village legislators, the county, everybody's going to be involved, and that's what's, and then every community will have the same issues, and we'll be sort of starting on that path. So please stay in the picture. I thank you on behalf of the entire Board of Trustees uh, for being here for the village. Uh, I hope the next uh, time we're together is in a new community center, right, village manager? This is one of the projects we did with DRI. We will be notified in three weeks or four about where the projects are from the $10 million DRI. And all of those projects and this will have to be coordinated. So um, as I said in the beginning, and I'll end it now, thank you for coming to the new innovation hub uh, for Westchester County.